This podcast is brought to you by Secret Society. This is, of course, for those of you who don't know, a clothing line that I've been a part of for almost three years strong. You know, for us, we love contemporary fashion basics, but a lot of companies that sell them don't provide the quality that comes with it. And you know those brands that slap on a logo that make you feel like you gotta be a certain somebody to rock it, or if it's dirt cheap, you know that your clothing is going to fall apart after like one wash. And we're really not about that. Secret Society is dope, high quality, contemporary streetwear that I rock on a regular basis because it feels and it looks good. So listen up. All Genius Brain listeners will get 15% off all first orders. And all you have to do is just type in the code BRAIN at checkout to get your 15% off that Secret Society, my friend. S C R T S O C I. ETY.com and enter brain to get your 15% off your first order today. Once again, that's S C R T S O C I E T Y.com. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> Damn, you know what? I'm just, I'm about to admit something that I've never admitted before. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you're going to fucking, you're going to, you're going to lose a lot of respect for me. <laughs> <laughs> you're either going to lose a lot of respect for me uh-huh. or uh-huh. you're going to respect me a lot. Okay. So, when I was going to break up with her, mm-hmm. at this point, I had already cemented it, cemented in my heart that mm-hmm. she wasn't the one for me. Mm-hmm. And I was okay with it. I yeah. was fine. Yeah. So when I told her like it was over, uh, I could hear her kind of crying on the other end. Mm-hmm. I felt so bad for her because I didn't feel anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I started fake crying for her. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> oh, so my God. Oh, my God. I started fake crying for her in five four three two one what's up everybody welcome to another episode of the genius brain podcast hi everybody (laughs) it's me dr nick (laughs) what is he is he russian i don't know i don't know what i I thought he was asian but then it's like do people still watch the simpsons You that know, shit was our childhood, it, dude. It, it, but the thing is, it's like, I don't know if you've watched any of the more relatively newer episodes. Mm-mm. It's changed so much. Oh, like, really? Because the thing is, once Family Guy started really popping off, I think they had to kind of try to keep up with their type of sense of humor. Okay. And so it ended up becoming like super random. And not to say The Simpsons wasn't random before, but mm-hmm. you could tell that their, uh, their jokes kind of changed, you know, and oh, their okay. sense of humor kind of changed. So it wasn't... Like when you watch the classic Simpsons, like let's say seasons one through like 15 or mm-hmm. something, you know, you'll notice a difference between that and then the Simpsons as of like uh, the past, I don't know, five years, six years. Yeah. Yeah. It's very different. When, when I used to watch the Simpsons, I, I remember I couldn't wait to watch uh, the Halloween specials oh, and the Christmas tre- specials. Treehouse of Horror, dude. Dude, Halloween specials were the, that was the fucking shit. best. Yeah. Hands down, yeah. dude. And that's why... I mean, this is before like the Hulu days and everything else, but we would have to look forward to these things. Yeah, yeah. Every year I'm like, it's Halloween. Yeah. I know I'm going to get a special yeah. Simpsons episode. Whatever TV show that you're watching, you're going to get a special Halloween episode. For sure. It was so fucking dope. I, I have a Disney Plus, so I actually rewatched those Treehouse of Horror episodes. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm like, dude, I remember these classics. I want to go and revisit them. And I watch it and it's like, takes me back, dude. It's like a fucking time capsule, man. You watch uh, the Hamilton? Hamilton? I haven't. I haven't. I said the Hamilton, like a fucking old <laughs> Korean man. You said the Hamilton. <laughs> Hamilton's dope. I'm. I'm not. I'm not even like super into musicals, mm-hmm. but Hamilton is fucking dope, man. That's all I've been singing around the house. Mariel's fucking irritated. She hates me right now. I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna keep singing it. But she loves it too, though. She loves yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah so the, good. That's something I've been meaning to check out, just because like you know everybody's talking about it. Is Anybody there... who says they haven't watched Hamilton, I'm like, Psh, you hate black people, dude. That's why. <laughs> oh, you fucking racist. <laughs> Trying to make it super polarizing. Oh, like, you man. don't fucking like black people. You yeah. piece of shit. No, but Hamilton's amazing. Fucking. Uh, speaking of a prominent. Black black people though fucking the smiths are in trouble dude what happened so do you do you know about this shit i i, I you gotta tell me you gotta okay <laughs> so watch this so yeah. i don't really keep up with too many things right mm-hmm. i'm trying to now just because you know we have this podcast and there are certain things that people want me to talk about right which i'm completely fine doing and mind you these are all loose opinions but mm-hmm. so apparently so you do you remember this rumor back in the day where people started up that uh that Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith were going through some shit mm-hmm. and that they were in an open relationship. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess before on the Red Table Talk before, they talked that they didn't have an open relationship. Mm-hmm. Well, during that time that people were speculating that they were split up, mm-hmm. they actually were split up. Mm-hmm. They went through a separation period. They okay. were legally divorced, yeah. but um, 
they didn't talk about the specific, uh, specificities, mm-hmm. but on the Red Table Talk, which is uh, Jada Pinkett Smith's show, yeah. she had Will on where she basically told him uh, about a relationship that she had with another man, mm-hmm. aka August Alsina. Mm-hmm. You know fucking August Alsina, the R&B singer, right? No, I don't know. That uh, if you hear a couple of his tracks, you know who he is, okay, right? Okay. So August Alsina, uh-huh. uh, she had a relationship with him. Mm-hmm. And the reason why they found this out is because August Alsina was doing a radio, radio interview. I forgot which one it was. I don't think it's the Breakfast Club. It could have been. But he talked about a past relationship that he had with uh, Jada Pinkett Smith. By name? By name. Oh, shit. By fucking name, uh-huh. right? J- Will and Jada Pinkett Smith have been together since like 1991 or 1997. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. But since the 90s. So people were like, wait, hold up. How the fuck could you be with Jada Pinkett Smith when August Alsina is in his 20s? Yeah. And he's actually Jaden Smith's friend, which is how she actually met August Alsina oh, through her son. Man. He's super fucking young because yeah. Jada Pinkett Smith is 51 years old, I, I, I believe. She's in her 50s. Uh-huh. So they're like, wait, how could you be with Jada if... They've been together since the 90s. That Uh doesn't make any fucking sense. So they're like, oh, Jada Pinkett Smith cheated on Will Smith. Uh And this is kind of how this relationship started circling. Other people can correct me if I'm wrong. I read this a couple of times. Uh I'm not too solid on this. But that's kind of where it all started out, where these rumors started coming out. Mm -hmm. So they addressed it on the Red Table Talk show. Or she talked about, she as she called it, if you watch the video clip, she goes, it was an entanglement. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, what do you mean entanglement? What do you mean entanglement? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here with these euphemisms, yeah. you know? <laughs> but that's, but that, even Will was like, entanglement, what do you mean? It's like, you were with him, uh-huh. right? But they were separated. And so on the radio show, even August Alsina says, um, like, Will Smith gave him... Uh, permission right which he did not mm-hmm. he did not give you fucking permission guy uh mr smith uh can i get the permission exactly to... like come on bro but august alcina but you know will smith or even jada pinkett smith wanted to correct that he goes there's nobody that can give somebody permission over me yeah. i can only do that right right so will you know and it's funny when you watch that video clip Will looks fucking uncomfortable, bro. He looks like and, and it's stuff. This happened a few years ago too. Uh-huh. This didn't happen recently. Oh, okay. So this is stuff that they've already dealt with, and their marriage is fine now. Yeah. But even bringing it up, you could look at Will Smith. Uh-huh. Like he's already. You could tell like, just the conversation topic kind of irritates him. Well, it's not exactly the most <laughs> normal conversation to be having. And it's man. their personal business that was put out, not even to their own volition. It was uh-huh. because fucking August Alsina decided to flap his fucking gums about some yeah. shit. And so um, what what I kind of researched and found out was, uh, number one, I don't know shit about this dude, right? Mm. So they actually met each other through Jaden Smith, her fucking son. Oh, that's the worst part about and, it. And uh, he's super young. I think he's still in his 20s. Yeah. But he met her at a time uh, where both of them were very broken human beings. Uh-huh. Jaden, Jaden, uh Pinkett Smith and uh, Will Smith weren't having a great relationship. Yeah. They were going through their own stuff and they were kind of elusive about what they were going through. But mm-hmm. he was basically saying like, you had to figure your shit out. I had to figure out my shit. Mm-hmm. And so while they were separated, um, August Alsina came into the li- came into her life and he was very broken too. Mm-hmm. So he had some shit with his, with his liver that went fucking bad. There was a chance that he was going to be a paraplegic or something that Whoa. he couldn't walk again. <laughs> uh, he went blind in one of his eye. Uh-huh. And I think recently his mom passed away. There's just a whole bunch of shit, dude. Yeah. He's basically Job from the Bible. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know that fucking meteor came down, yeah, took out his yeah. whole farm. He's yeah. fucking Job. Yeah. And so in this, she kind of found uh, comfort in him. And so what she, what she basically expressed at the Red Table Talk, she was saying that she figured out that she had a problem that she likes being with broken people Mm. that she finds an attraction in somebody that she feels like she could fix and Mm -hmm. that's where she found a lot of comfort in and so you could tell august alcina still has feelings for her or whatever right but they they called it quits but Mm -hmm. that shit blew the fuck up Uh and she kept on using words as like entanglement entanglement i had an entanglement like these euphemisms man what What the fuck you mean entanglement you know come on entanglement you had an affair. You yeah. had a fucking affair. You know, I'm, I guess they were separated. Even Will says they were separated. Yeah. But I, I think the uh, the thing that kind of took online that people were kind of saying was there's a double standard, right? Um, when people kind of look at it as if this was the other way around where Will Smith was with a girl who went through, who had a lot of mental problems and mm-hmm. a lot of mental issues and mm-hmm. he found comfort and they, they hooked up or they were in, he took in advantage. A, they would say that uh, he took advantage of her. And so I think on Twitter and I, and I was reading on a couple of forums, they were kind of saying that Jada Pinkett Smith took advantage of August Alsina mm-hmm. that uh, in a time of weakness, um, she kind of 
used her power or whatever it was, whatever she found attractive, they said that, you know, she took advantage of a guy who was mentally unstable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the whole thing that's going on right there. Mm -hmm. And I, I personally don't know how to feel about this shit. And it's not really my business. They, they figured out what they were doing. Right. And even watching that red table talk was super fucking awkward. Cause mm -hmm. I think like even bringing it up, you could tell Will Smith is a little salty. <laughs> I will be fucking salty. Right. Well, it, I mean, it's, the thing is, if he's 20-something now, then how old was he when they were having... I think he was super young, 20s or something like that. Okay. I mean, you guys can look it up. I'll, I'll put a, probably put it in the video. Yeah, that, fact check it. that's... Because look, man, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith at that point is a grown-ass woman. You yeah. know, she's a grown-ass full... Uh, well, not full life experience, but good life experience oh, for sure. adult. Uh, whereas this guy, uh, he's still a kid. You know, yes, by by uh, legal standards, he's an adult, but not by life experience. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so he's still learning, and he's still he's still becoming his own person. So, in that scenario, I would say the blame falls more on Jada's lap, just because she should be more aware. Yeah. You know, um, and look, it's like to each their own. Everybody has their cup of tea, but like just the sheer age gap. It's like, how do you relate to somebody on an intellectual that level? That could be your mom. Yeah. I mean, like, well, no, no. I mean, the other way around for Jada, well, like, what is... Well, for her, she said that she kind of, she realized that she had a problem of trying to be with broken people and trying to fix Oh, so them. her thing was just, I want to fix this boy. Yeah. Well, I forgot what that... There's a phrase or a term for people like that, right? Mm -hmm. Which I see a lot of people in. And I think I, I've even been in a relationship yeah. where um, I could tell just from the the habits that this girl had mm -hmm. with her previous boyfriends that she had before, she specifically were, she was with people that she felt that she could fix. Mm. And I was one of her pet projects. And I think the problem with that, and I, actually I know the problem with that, is that broken people trying to fix another broken person doesn't ever fucking work. <laughs> yeah. Right. You got a yeah. lot of your own personal issues that you have to deal with it, right. deal with. And you're what you're really doing is you're deflecting uh, a lot of the stuff that you have to fix and you feel that in the process of you helping somebody else out there's a couple of things that happen you feel like in the process of you helping somebody else out um, you're healing yourself as well mm -hmm. and really you're not mm -hmm. you're not mm -hmm. and the second thing that I really believe that happens is that when you when you become the catalyst for somebody else's positive change it almost makes you feel like you're not a broken human being now mm -hmm. right you say well if I'm helping this person out yeah I guess I'm really not that bad off. Yeah. But the only thing that you're doing is you're fucking lying to yourself, <laughs> right? And then what happens when that person is fixed? Yeah. Where, where are you now? Uh -huh. Your your definition and your meaning of a meaningful relationship was you fixing this person. Well, guess what? This person is now fixed. Yeah. So where are you at in your fucking relationship? Right. Right. And I think for her, a good thing she did realize that. And even for him, he's a broken human being and he's trying to have somebody else fix him. Yeah. And I don't know what he personally went through, but it seems like he was going through a lot, uh -huh. going blind. He couldn't walk again but you you <laughs> where does all that stuff come from <laughs> he was a serial killer in a previous life and this is what you get yeah you know but i don't know what the fuck happened but he had like some kind of like some kind of medical condition that was going to affect him walking uh -huh. and i i was reading all the the shit that was going on in his life and uh -huh. i'm like shit i'd be depressed too yeah. fuck man yeah um but you know for him and i'm trying to think of myself as a young man who was with somebody who was trying to fix me. It's almost like you kind of define who you are as a human being based on what somebody else says you are. And he's not really taking the time to really fix himself. Yeah. And I think he's still really fucked up because I think only in 2018 or so, his mom passed away too. Mm. So this, this motherfucker can't catch a break. Yeah. I mean, the thing is though, right. Is that it's, it's all fine and good to have like a support community around you who, who like helps you out. Right. Uh -huh. But in terms of, using the word fix, right? How is a, a non-trained uh, person going to have the tools necessary in order to really know what's going on, to dig into these issues and help a person address those issues in a healthy manner, right? Yeah. You don't have the tools because you didn't study it. You're not a fucking doctor in this field, right? It, we're, we're talking about... Um, Mental issues that's not visible. It's not like a cut on, on your knee that you can visibly fix, right? Yeah. You got to do some digging to find out what the root causes are of all of these issues that this person is going through, why it's making them feel the way they, they feel, why it's making them think what they think. And it's, it's, a, it's a process. And then so like to somebody to come in and, and talk about fixing people, 
when you don't have the credentials for it, when you're not a doctor by any means. So what are you using? What are you using as your baseline to, to like gauge how you're doing? Just trying you to know, fucking <laughs> suck the pain out of his dick. <laughs> that's that's, that's uh, basically. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know what? That's not bad therapy either. But that is only uh, temporary, yeah, my friends. Yeah, exactly. It's. It, I wouldn't call that. Maybe fixing. she wanted to be with a younger man. I don't fucking know. But I don't know what's going on. I feel like celebrities too. They're they're always in some weird shit. Oh, for sure, man. Dude, think about like the world that they're living in, where they have luxury and freedom that's not granted to most people in this world not only are they wealthy they they're famous so they have power as well from Dude, that because you know about the whole jeffrey epstein thing mm -hmm, too mm -hmm. right and i guess recently something came out about somebody uh, her last name is maxwell jelaine yeah did, yeah. You, did you read about jelaine that shit? yeah she's basically was his accomplice the whole time she she's a fucking criminal just as bad as he is she she fucking groomed these young girls you know she was kind of like the uh, the initiator, right? Mm. Because Jeffrey Epstein was kind of like uh, socially awkward, apparently, and um, he, he wasn't as good with talking to people. So she would be kind of like the soft, you know, big sister or motherly type role that she would play mm -hmm. talking to these young girls, come off very nice, uh, come off like very caring. And then that's, you're in, you get their trust. Once you have their trust, you start initiating him into these little things. First, it starts with a massage. Then Jeffrey Epstein busts his dicks out in the uh, dick dick out in the massage. Then it turns into, oh, I'm gonna send you to my friends. What do you think happens when that happens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So she, she what is. What the fuck did she get out of it? It's just she, she, she liked that type of shit. It wasn't like she who got knows, paid, right? Man, who knows, man? No, no. She was his partner. She was oh. like, yeah, she was Jeffrey Epstein's partner. So like that was. Like his like partner as, okay, and yeah. like his partner, like like a wife without the title, pretty much. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. So they were a couple. They were together. Um, and I don't know if like Jeffrey Epstein had some kind of hold on her, like where he kind of brainwashed her. But obviously, she has some fucked up issues in herself to to look at what's going on and to be completely okay with it. You know, she was mentioned in the documentary, right? She was the one that was. She would be like, it's okay, just kind of fall into it. Well, I mean, th she, she basically would not even like really talk about it in that way, it seemed like. It, it, she just normalized everything, yeah. you know? It, like this, nothing unusual is going on here, you know? Like this is this is what it, like we're, your life is going to be so much better because, mm. of, because you met us, you know? Jesus. Like everything you want in life. You want to be an artist? We'll send you to. What did she do for a living exactly? That she was connected to Jeffrey Epstein. I heard she was like thoroughly connected to like her family is highly connected, to like the CIA or some shit like I that. I don't know. I forget. I think they did mention what her family background was, but um, yeah. It, it, either way, it's that she was just as. I mean, she was complicit. You know, she has. <laughs> they said that she had. She has videos, or she said that she has videos of high high end. So so that's that's. I think that's what people are worried about because when uh, Jeffrey Epstein's place was raided, right? They recovered a lot of shit that he stored away in a safe and all of that. The videos, pictures, mm -hmm. and that's why there's a big question mark about how Jeffrey Epstein died. They say he committed suicide, oh, but he, didn't, seems, he was killed. Yeah, yeah. So. Out of that, I mean, this guy obviously had a lot of shit over a very powerful people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what did uh, uh, Ghislaine have? I don't know if it's so, Ghislaine or Ghislaine, but yeah. So they, like... they confiscated all that stuff, but they this is the government, right? Mm -hmm. This is the government, And they yeah. haven't brought any of these people in? No. That's because they're going to use that to control, to control <laughs> them. That's what they're but fucking possibly, doing with that. Yeah, I don't know. That's exactly what the government's doing. Because I'm sure doing. there was some damning evidence in there, you know? Um, fucking Bill Clinton getting his dick sucked Well, shit. no, so like with Bill Clinton, like he was seen on the island, you know, countless times, but mm -hmm. one of the the primary girls who was a victim in, in that circumstance said, you know, Bill Clinton never did anything like uh, that was... Uh, you know, an inappropriate, or he, she never saw him engage with like mm. these minors. I'm he would my dick sucked by Monica Lewinsky. I'm good off you, and young. It felt good. <laughs> it's like I don't like young people. Yeah. I got like Monica Lewinsky. I'm good. Um, yeah. So uh, that's what she said. Now it doesn't mean that he's he's innocent by any means, mm -hmm. but like if some of these people are partaking in those activities on on that island, then and he's and Bill Clinton was there that many times. 
chances well, are. Well, he was there multiple times. Yeah, yeah. Chan- uh, he was there many times. But what, what you doing there, <laughs> Billy? What you doing there, Billy? I mean, yeah. So from what she said, she saw. He was always like very professional, uh, very kind. Never did you? anything that's inappropriate. That's interesting. Professional, do- but what are you doing there? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know. Like maybe, maybe there was just that friendship, and he was there. But but even still, he knows what's going on. He sees like what's happening, even if he's not taking part in it. He's still guilty by not saying anything about it. You know, not doing anything about it, and continuing to let it happen. Like, oh yeah, that's just Jeffrey being Jeffrey. Yeah, you know, ah. It's just the yeah. it's just the usual rape of minors. Yeah. Nothing new, you I, know. I'm so curious to who else is there. There has to be so many politicians in yeah, that shit. Yeah, dude. Fucking money and power corrupts all. Even Jeffrey Epstein's lawyer was fucking there all the time. And, and and you know, he he pleads his innocence saying, oh, I had no, you know, part of it. I was just there in a professional capacity." Yeah, but come on man really like the girl said she's seen the dude with you know who's like, the girl that's oh you're talking about max maxwell no 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 the, like so the one of the main victims uh oh, okay uh, yeah like uh one of the girls that jeffrey was kind of pimping out and that you know he mm-hmm. used to um i forgot what her name was but yeah she was like one of the uh the primary focus of, of the documentary when they when they when they said her name like jelaine maxwell but mm-hmm. they just only referred to as maxwell i thought they were talking about the r&b singer so i was like the whole time i'm like Yo, what the <laughs> no. fuck did maxwell do <laughs> yeah. man and so i was so confused reading the article at first yeah. and when people were asking me to read about it yeah. because uh my, my buddy nick he told me about the epstein stuff and uh-huh. i started looking into it uh-huh. it's all fucked up situations yeah but i was like what the fuck did maxwell do yeah he write these r&b songs about <laughs> yeah it's, i mean like it's it's fucking crazy bro they they pretty much had a ring like in a, a child abuse child rape ring that so, what what is it that's so fucking weird i mean the thing is it's like dude even jeffrey epstein bro like you look at kind of his rise to prominence and wealth mm-hmm. he lied his way through it yeah you know uh he, he like he he lied on his resume to get a job right yeah he, um, he uh literally fucking uh bullshitted his way through his whole life yeah in a very successful yeah. way. yeah and then he connected himself with powerful people made money for powerful people and first of all extorted them after <laughs> that's fucking nuts dude what a fucking psychopath and a genius at the same yeah, time yeah so bit him he, in the ass though yeah he he's uh it, the fact that he he's gotten or he did get away with it for as long as he did though what does that say man you know that again it just reinforces the idea you got money you got power you know you got connections like you never know what the fuck somebody goes through man like i i just or, or like what really who they are behind closed doors mm-hmm. and that's why i'm saying like some of these people out there who are so pious and righteous i'm like you guys are some of the most fucked up human beings for sure you're hiding something dude dude nobody is not flawed you know what I mean? Everybody has their problems. Everybody has their flaws. Um, it's just whether or not yeah, you can be honest about it. You know, um, that's why that's why like I always say uh, and I try as much as possible not to judge anybody ever because it's not my place not to me. do. <laughs> well, I judge the shit out of people. <laughs> Especially like the, well, I mean, I'm not judging Will Smith. Will Smith is like one of my heroes. I yeah. fucking love that. Uh, who's, yeah, like who, who would say he's not who a fucking hero? could ever hate fucking yeah, Will Smith, exactly. man? It's fucking um, when uh, we were talking about this earlier too, where mm. the uh, the Shane Dawson dude, oh, yeah. like that YouTuber, yeah. apparently this fool has done so many public apologies before his behavior and I did this like one little tweet where I was like, I was like, everybody needs to be forgiven for their f- past life. Like, mm-hmm. like when when they apologize, mm-hmm. like people can change. And I was mm-hmm. like, but when you're on your four thousand seven hundred eighty ninth apology, <laughs> exactly. Like, I think that's <laughs> yeah. I don't shit, dude. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. And that's that motherfucker, right? Uh-huh. And I feel like too with this with with this cat Shane, I feel like he got away with a lot of the stuff that he said because he's a very flamboyant gay dude. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, oh, that shit's fucking, you know. Shane, this is not a comment on gay guys, but I yeah. feel like you know a lot of the gay homies that I have, they yeah. say fucking crazy shit. Yeah. But for some reason, when they do, yeah. it comes off a little funnier. Uh-huh. Maybe because of the flamboyance, because of how extra they are, that yeah. it's a lot more hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of the people around him probably let him skate by with these type of comments because, oh, it's just Shane being Shane. Yeah. But when you make a joke, about a, an, a like molesting an eleven year old girl. Yeah. Where's the comedy in that? Yeah. Like, where's there's where's no comedy. there's no comedy? And you know, he kind of wrote his apology saying that he would just stay say stuff for shock value, right? Maybe this motherfucker has Asperger's. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he has some type of 
maybe he's on the spectrum or some shit, yeah, right? That's some sort of condition. Right. But it's so odd when people look at these type of behaviors and they go, oh my God, he's so funny. Like mm-hmm. he's so genius. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? You know? Yeah, that, that's the thing, man. Is I mean, we just talked about this, about it being too PC in comedy and there being a lie. Like, I something like molesting a fucking minor. There might be a line there, bro. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. What, what, what what's the you, joke? Yeah, what's what is the joke in that? Like, I I could I could see you saying that for shock value. Yeah. But don't be surprised if if majority of the people are taking offense to that yeah. or or just being like, yo, that's that's fucking out of line, mm-hmm. man. And I guess like it's also congruent to. Uh, who he is recently too, because he's also done a lot of more sus things. I don't mm. want to say too recent, but mm. I think if, I think that clip was when she was 11. I don't know how old Willa Smith is now. She's like 18 or some shit, right? Yeah, I think she's, she's like adult. 18 years old. Yeah. So that's like seven years that are passed, but he's also had a lot of fuck ups since that. So I think it's more like how many times can you apologize or is it just exactly. who you are? And do we really want to support somebody like exactly. that? Like I said, I'm not too hot into like cancel culture. Um, but motherfucker, what the hell, man? Well, why are you, why are you well, making molestation molestation <laughs> jokes about a fucking eleven year old girl? That's about one of the Smiths. <laughs> one of the fucking Smiths. Yeah, that's fucking uh, entertainment royalty, motherfucker. Exactly, exactly. And and the thing is, is that like you said, is that if there's a consistent pattern of behavior, mm-hmm. and and like you're apologizing for the same type of shit over and over again, chances are. That's what you are. Exactly. You know, like, and you're not really sorry for it. You're sorry that you got backlash. That's exactly. what you're sorry about. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it's pretty fucking wild, man. Uh, that somebody like that um, if somehow, some way has survived it, <laughs> you know, and yeah. it's like stays relevant. It's, I gotta read fucking, I remember Jaden and also uh, Jaden and Jada mm-hmm. tweeted at yeah, him. Yeah, they did. Yeah. So Jaden said, uh, Shane Dawson, I am disgusted by you. You sexualizing an 11-year-old girl. This is all in caps, by the way. So yeah. he's screaming. Yeah. <laughs> Who happens to be my sister? <laughs> is the furthest, furthest thing from funny and not okay in the slightest bit. <laughs> Some unpopular opinion. I think Shane did this and multiple other things uh, like such as a joke. Also, these actions were in the past, meaning he took criticism then and worked on setting a better example because no one should be painted as a pedo when it was a joke. That's what somebody wrote one of his fans. Uh-huh. Yeah, but that's like he did it like six or seven. Yeah, the problem eight, is times. there's a pattern of behavior. Exactly, it's not a one-off thing. It was like, oh, I was genuinely just trying to be funny, but I guess I crossed the line there, and I see that, and then I, I apologize do it like twelve times. Like, yeah. hey man, might might just be you, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> you might, might just, just be, you. be a little bit of a pedo. You yeah, know? might might be a little bit because <laughs> yeah. I, I like even me trying to joke about that makes me feel weird. Yeah, it makes me feel yeah, for sure. uh, little. Di- and I'm a crass human being. I mean, I say some weird fucked up shit. So, and, and you know, that's even also taken taking into consideration that in some parts of the world, uh, for example, some parts of like South America, it's okay to marry like a thirteen year old ch- a child. Yeah, you know that that's their culture. That's how it is. Like it wouldn't be considered uh, rape there, mm-hmm. right? But even with that consideration, that in some parts of the world that's deemed normal, it feels weird as fuck. Yeah, talking about that or joking about that because of the society we live in. Yeah, because the culture you know we have. Um, so yeah, for me it's just like yeah, I look man, joking is 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 a great for the soul to make people laugh, to laugh yourself, all of that. But molesting a child, sexualizing <laughs> a child. I don't know, what, the, I don't know, know what to tell you, buddy. Yeah, man. I, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like this is this is one of those hard things that's going to be very di- difficult for you to come back from. The, the Smiths are against you, dude. Mm-hmm. The Smiths are a fucking powerhouse. Yeah, man. Think of, like I was saying earlier, dude, think about how many millions of people he offended because of that. You yeah. know, like just, just Will's fan base, man. Like, I, and, and everybody loves Will, you know? Uh, you know who's a huge uh you know who willow smith was, was or probably still is a huge fan of who? fucking clara oh really yeah like like she used to comment on clara shit all the time what? and i didn't know who willow smith was yeah right yeah and i didn't i didn't know at the time that mm-hmm. willow smith when she dropped that one single i was like damn this little girl's crazy yeah yeah, uh, yeah. not crazy in a bad way but yeah you know, she's like dope she, yeah and then uh yeah because that generation is a youtube generation yeah but she looked up to clara 
true, a lot. True, true. That makes sense. Fucking crazy, yeah. man. I actually have a Will Smith story. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I was uh, at Starbucks with Z, and then uh, we were in line, uh, you know, just waiting to order, and I felt somebody staring at me. You know, like that feeling you get when somebody's staring at you, mm -hmm. right? And then I'm like who's staring at me like what direction is it coming from right because i could feel eyes on me but i don't know who it is so i started kind of like looking around and then i i turned in a direction it was willow smith and she was just staring at me in line and i turned around and looked at her and then i i, I locked eyes with her and then i was like why does she look so familiar and then like that was um at a point where she did the the whip my hair Thing. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's so it. It, it, like she was still relevant in that sense, like as a. Well, actually, she's still relevant now. I'm not saying that, but she's like her her. Uh, I guess stardom really kind of was peaking at that point, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm I'm looking at her, and it felt like a long time, but I'm sure we were just like uh, staring at each other for maybe about like five seconds, and I was trying to process in my head why does this girl look so familiar? Yeah. Like who is she? And I'm like, oh shit, that's Willow Smith. And then I was, next thing I thought was she was just there with a friend. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where the fuck is her security? Like, she's a minor. Like, yeah. wh where's her bodyguard or security guard? Like, don't tell me, you know, uh, Will and Jada's just letting her out. Fucking. Yeah. I think at that point she might have been like 13. What the fuck? Yeah, 13, 14. Was she just doing that with her friend? What the hell? Yeah, yeah. Well, more so. Now, I'm not saying that 13, 14 year olds can't hang out, but because she's a celebrity. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. And then so uh, after I looked at her and I realized who she was, next thing I uh, was thinking like is where's her bodyguard? So I started looking around the room and then uh, I saw one dude kind of sitting incognito, has a hat on and he was just staring at her. So oh, like, oh, okay, God. there he is. Yeah, <laughs> That's fucking funny. Yeah. Why was she staring at you? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I would like to ask her, hey, do you remember that Asian guy? I remember that guy? He's like, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I don't know. I was like, do I do I look funny right now? Do I got something on me? And yeah. I told Z, I was like, yo, uh, that's Will Smith right there. And yeah. he's like, oh, shit. And I was like, yeah, she was just staring at me. I don't know why, <laughs> you know? Um, you but just be like, hey, stop saying, I'm going to fucking sock you. <laughs> I was like, I know you a little girl, but. Her. I know you a little girl, no, but. No, she wasn't th like staring at me and like, like dogging me or anything, you know? Uh -huh. She. I, I, I just don't know. Like she was just the there. first time I ever saw an Asian person. <laughs> I wonder what you guys smell like. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, she, like I got, uh, we got our drinks and then like she got her drinks and then like, yeah, they left with the security guard, but man, Will Smith kids though. They're, they're talented, man. They are. Like I, they are. like just for them to, a to be able to carve out their own space and entertainment in their own unique way. Such a challenge, man. It's, it's hard because yeah. he, they're, they're, they have to live in the shadow of yeah, their father, man. right? And obviously, like, the greatness of his father is who he is, right? Mm. But I kind of appreciate it. I mean, I'm a fucking kid weird, but uh, <laughs> I'm a fucking kid Jane a weird as fuck, <laughs> right? And I know people are like, well, what defines weird, David? What's the societal standard for that? You know what the fuck I mean, weird? Tell me Jane ain't fucking weird. He's fucking weird. He's, on the, he's in the left side. Yeah, he's, he's on the left, left field. I yeah, mean. he's definitely left field as fuck. I don't know what the fuck he is. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just yeah. saying he's he motherfucking different. Mm -hmm. But he's carved his 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 own identity, and uh, I think it's very authentic. It doesn't seem like he's trying hard either, right? Mm -hmm. I think because of kind of the the creative way that his father has raised him and mm -hmm. his mother has raised him, mm -hmm. and including their daughter, yeah. they they just different, and yeah. they, they do different in a very, in my personal opinion, in kind of a dope way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, look, when I think about that situation, I do think like there's a sense of you're trying to become um, like a, a celebrity or a public figure in some way. And obviously, if you're trying to do it through the avenue of acting, mm -hmm. that's some big shoes to fill, right? Oh, After Earth is one of the most terrible films I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Jada Smith, you deserve, you should get canceled for that. You deserve a public apology for that Pursuit shit. Pursuit of Happiness is where it should have ended, right? I know. And then something happened with fucking After Earth. I deserve, we all deserve a public apology and I want my one and a half hours back in my life. Fuck that film. Yeah. But then, but then the thing is, I'm sure there was kind of a sense of like, I gotta, I gotta carve out my own lane. You know, I gotta do something different. And and like, I I would imagine whether it was like a conscious decision or just on a subconscious level that it kind of pushed him 
to be a little bit more different and, and mm-hmm. pursue kind of a different thing. Because, yeah, Will Smith was also a popular artist as a musician, too. That's right. But it, it wasn't like his bread and butter, you know, that it wasn't when he was like starting out. But then he became a fucking international movie star. And that's what people really recognize Will Smith as. Like, yeah, he'll make a, a soundtrack for the movies he's doing, but nobody's thinking like, oh, Will Smith, the music artist. They're thinking Will Smith, the actor, right? Mm-hmm. So I feel like in that sense, um, maybe it kind of pushed him a little bit harder into going into that left field area, right? Yeah. To, to be a little bit weirder. To kind of stand out a little yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The cool thing is I feel he's kind of built his own success, not off of his father's name, mm-hmm. but off of his own branding, his yeah. own style and yeah. whatever he does. Yeah. Which, like I said, it's so fucking hard to do. Like, for example, look at... Um, Jordan's kid Mm -hmm. you know people had high hopes for him because he's the son of Jordan Mm -hmm. and you know even before he was even given a chance or to really show what he's about people are like oh you better be just as good as your fucking father (laughs) yeah right you know which is a lot to live up by (laughs) yeah man and I think like they've kind of in their own right just done their own thing Mm -hmm. and I I was like I I could really fuck with that man. yeah and and the most important thing is they seem happy doing yeah that's I think that's the most important thing because I feel like kids who um have those type of parents who are celebrities and like that cast a big shadow. I mean, it's easy for them to fall into depression because of like not only what other people want from you, but because of expectations placed on you. They right? get a fucking film like After Earth. <laughs> Fuck that film. Dude. I haven't even watched this. So I can't even you comment should. on it. It's like it's really short. Uh huh. But it took. I think I saw it about six times Mm -hmm. as in like six parts for me to just to finish it because of how bad it was (laughs) i was so upset and it's fucking will smith yeah it's well i mean i love all the will smith shit yeah but i I mean look man as great as will is he's done some pretty questionable projects in the in the like past few years i'm trying to figure out what other movies that he did that i didn't like well there was that uh, one on netflix where he's a cop you know i forgot what that one was that one got pretty bad reviews that was weird i didn't know that was a film i thought it was good i thought it was like a tv series Mm -hmm. and that's the kind of vibe that i got from i was like as a as a standalone episode Mm -hmm. this is pretty good Mm -hmm. as a film what the fuck (laughs) it it kind of just started out of nowhere didn't go anywhere it didn't end anywhere either so i I didn't understand what the what the point of it was but i didn't think it was terrible i think it would have been a great episode in a series yeah no, but like Will, will like he can do no wrong. Even if he does wrong, it's just like easily forgettable because watch this will be on Epstein's Island, dude. Oh I'm, my I'm, God. I'm 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 cutting everything out, dude. I'm <laughs> I'm deleting this fucking podcast. Oh I'm, man, I'm, I, I don't just have give any up hope. on life. Then you know I don't have any hope in this if world. If Will dude. was there, um, yeah, I, I would lose faith in mankind. If he's getting jiggy with it on that island, dude, I'm gonna be so <laughs> upset. I'm gonna be so fucking upset. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's 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 forever the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, man. Like he's he's always doing something. Like remember when he fucking joined social media, man? Like that. Oh my god, dude. He, he even killed YouTube. I was yeah. like, how the fuck you do YouTube better than YouTubers? Yeah, exactly. It was like, dude, Will Smith is on fucking Instagram. Will Smith is on social or, or like on YouTube. Like this is gonna be interesting to see. And then like he took he took it to a level that I didn't think he was gonna do because I was curious how he's gonna utilize the platform. Is it just gonna be like a plug for the projects he's working? On? But no, he treated that thing like its own project. You and know, he got and, money to do it too. So his editors are fucking. I think he had Michael Bay edit one for him. <laughs> so he definitely has a fucking yeah, advantage. Yeah, I mean he he has the money to hire a crew to follow Dude, him around. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I think that if there's a few people on this earth that I want to like sit down and have a, a really long conversation with mm-hmm. will smith is definitely one of them man for sure will smith would you like to come on the genius brain podcast <laughs> he probably he don't know who the fuck yeah, i am he's like, he's like you call my son weird <laughs> he's like you're forever blacklisted in my book I was like, i'm always saying your son's weird because he introduced your wife to fucking uh, oh, august alcina oh, that man. fucking little that little shit <laughs> oh man that's what he did you yeah. don't want to fucking set it up speaking of that dude how how imagine how fucking weird it must be that to know that your fucking mom is having sexual relations with your friend you know oh, that's weird dude i i'm sorry man i think i'm gonna fight that friend <laughs> i know I, you know i wonder how Jaden feels about that i don't know it's like dog i brought you over for some milk and cookies <laughs> yeah. and you're over here sucking on my mama's titties yeah. like what the hell <laughs> yeah it's like man you you took a putting your hand in the cookie jar to a different place for <laughs> 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 that'd be so fucking funny August I'll see is like hey man I'm your new pops you know from here on out we can't be friends I'm your pops you gotta call me poppy you gotta call me daddy oh fuck that would be some cold ass shit bro weird ass shit yeah, dude yeah but I, look man I you know I, I don't know how I'd be able to process and deal with that like, like I said I think I would just have to fight the dude it's like look man 
maybe I'm going to process it different later. But for right now, we just got to fight <laughs> because I need to get that shit out of I my wonder, system. I first. wonder who would win in a fight, August Alcina or Jaden Smith. I don't I don't even know what the dude looks like. So he, he's like a he's a good looking dude. He's mm -hmm. like light skinned. He's a light skinned dude. He kind of like Chris Brown, mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. sort of. I might just be clumping them all together. <laughs> but, you know, Jaden Smith is a good looking dude, too. Yeah. But it's just be the battle of the light skins and see what happens. <laughs> maybe I don't know, man. That's yeah, but that's that shit's a uh, that's wild, man. Like even if even if they were separated, the fact that she was having a relationship with somebody who's like what thirty no twenty something years. Dude, isn't it her? weird when you start to when 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 you kind of grow up, you have this idea of what um, a perfect relationship is and what these couples are, mm -hmm. and then you find out. And this is for anybody out there. You'll find out that like 70% of these couples that you know, mm. they either are going to break up or they have some <laughs> fucked up shit about them. Like it's very, very rare that I see a couple um, that's seemingly perfect mm -hmm. in and out. Yeah. No, it doesn't exist. Per perfect doesn't exist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like every couple is most likely going through uh, similar issues and problems throughout the relationship that other couples go through. Yeah, it's it's all fucked up. Yeah. And that's the crazy thing too. And it makes, sometimes it makes me question, like, why do I even want to be in a long-term relationship? Like, <laughs> well, what the fuck am I thinking? The, 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 the thing is, is, is how you handle it, how you deal yeah. with it as a couple. I love right? you, Ariel. <laughs> is, I mean, that's the most important thing. And, and like, you know, I think one thing that um, I always try to do is I try to speak to people who are, more advanced at a more advanced stage than I am, let's say in life mm -hmm. or, or just experience, right? And and um, marriage and couples is is like one of those topics, right? Where um, I seek more information about it. And I think when you talk to a lot of these people who've been married for let's say five, 10, 15, 20 years, right? And and you talk to them about like what works for them. I mean, they're not ever gonna say, oh yeah, we, we don't have any problems anymore. It's just that there are key ingredients to making the relationship stay successful and stay working. And one of the biggest thing is communication, right? Uh, any any couple that tells you that they don't have any problems, the ones that have blatantly said that shit in front of my face, mm. all of us were like calling bullshit. <laughs> And lo and behold, they are the ones with the biggest fucking problems. Right. And it's very easy for somebody to just go up on social media and say, like, this is my perfect life, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I look at it and I'm like, you two are, haven't had sex in years. You fucking broken human. And I find that so often, too. And it's mm -hmm. because they like to have that megaphone. I don't know why they do that. Maybe it's just to hide their insecurities. But they blast out that their relationship is perfect. Mm -hmm. And it, I'd say 100% of the time. That that shit is never true. Of course, because you're hiding something. Of that you, course, that you have to go out of your way to do that when your relationship is fucked up. It's such a weird thing to me, and 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 such a dangerous thing for these kids to like consume because they start to get this idea that there is a perfect relationship, there is a perfect you know a person. Everybody's flawed. Everybody's imperfect. Everybody you know has some sort of problems that they got to deal with. But then it's like when you bring in another person into that picture and you guys decide to become a team, it's like, okay, how do you tackle those problems as a team now? Sometimes those problems are going to exist more on the individual side. Sometimes it's going to exist together. But again, it's like, how do you support one another? How do you communicate? How do you stay honest with each other? And then productively get past it. And, and it's like easier said than done, obviously, because sometimes people close up. Some Sometimes people aren't honest about what they're feeling or honest about the problems that exist. Sometimes they don't communicate it. So like there's so many um, obstacles that you got to get past sometimes in order for you to get to where you want to get to. But do you think that you could stay with somebody if they had cheated on you? It'd be really hard because for me... Um, I think trust is one another one of those big uh, pillars uh, yeah. to to make a, a strong relationship. Communication, honesty, you know, trust, whatever, right? Um, well, not whatever. They're important. <laughs> <but, laughs> some of the bullshit. Yeah, some of that's bullshit. Uh, no, but if somebody cheated on me, uh, it's a violation of trust, you know. Um, and so, like, oh, I don't know if I could do it. It's like somebody's fucking snail trail dick is all over your face. Are you fucking kidding me? No, it's the, disgusting. It, so this, because like for me, um, I'm, I'm like, I'm a principled guy. Actually, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. I, and, and so like for me, my principles really would not allow me to like cheat on somebody. I like, I, I could say with a hundred percent certainty, you know, that I wouldn't do that to a person I'm with. Um, uh, but then, 
if let's say like my partner did it to me, I mean, my first instinct would be to say, no, I don't think I would be able to overlook that. Or, and this or, is, by the way, they cheat on you. You don't have kids. You don't have proper, none of that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of that's a factor. Yeah. Because the likely, the, 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 the fact that it happened, there's always a possibility for it to happen again. Yeah. You know? Um, and so, I'm, look, I'm not saying that somebody can't uh, learn from that and then, you know, get uh, improve from it, but- the fact that it even happened in the first place, that your judgment uh, and your principles uh, were kind of uh, grayed out for you yeah. in order for you to let that, whatever your reasoning is, oh, but it's because you never paid attention to me. It's because you don't show me affection. Like if you can really come to that conclusion and justify it even and, and be defensive about it, it's, it's not something that yeah know. like where's this where's this relationship going to go from here right i don't know it's hard for me like i thought about it too but i've actually known a, a couple actually quite a few people who have been cheated on before mm -hmm. and they they kind of went through it and they've came out stronger at the other end of it a hey, more power to them yeah then, you know and i think it's it's different right it's it's i think when sometimes when people think about um somebody cheating on their spouse mm -hmm. spouse mm -hmm. yeah i've been right, watching too much mike easy, tyson, tyson. <laughs> and so, you know i think about uh, these people that's cheating on their spouse and they come through and they just want to be devastated the fifth one no you know? <laughs> i want to just kick makeup. them out i want to eviscerate this body i would want to, eat, want to chew you out no but uh <laughs> They think that it's just something that happens at, at a whim, right? They, they they saw some ass or they saw some the tip of somebody's dick and they're just like, oh, this is what happens. But there's a lot of underlying issues that happen yeah. that lead to this point, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. And so um, um, just one out of these couples, uh, uh, they kind of had a conversation. They were op very open about it with me um, as a friend from Sacramento. And they were kind of talking about what they went through and what was going on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it had to do with no communication mm -hmm. where they wouldn't tell each other how they felt about certain things. That's a big problem. And so um, there was something that was missing in their relationship that this other stranger was fulfilling that the other person wasn't. Absolutely. And it wasn't that that other person could make that them whole. It was just that one little piece that they needed from their other partner that was very important that they got from somebody else. Uh -huh. And the sad part about that is they wanted to have their cake and eat it too. Mm. And, but because they still love the other person, they, they were in the, essentially what they were doing with the person that they were cheating with. They were just using them to fulfill that small part, but they still love the other person. And when that shit came to a head and um, she decided to actually tell him that she was cheating because she couldn't live with the guilt, all hell broke loose, mm -hmm. you know, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a terrible thing, but what they found out in, in, when they cheated or why she cheated was actually because of something that he wasn't doing for her. And so what I mean by that is that I'm not excusing her fucking behavior, mm -hmm. but there is a, there was some fault on his hand, mm -hmm. his end, because she said that, and he admitted this too, that she would try to address certain issues in their relationship and he would just always throw it back at her as if she's being crazy mm -hmm. and um, she's just being hyper emotional. Yeah. And because he was very dismissive of how she felt, she found somebody that would listen to her mm -hmm. and then she kind of fell, quote unquote, in love with somebody else that was fulfilling something that she very much needed. And it was something that she brought to him. But because he didn't want to communicate that with her and then he was surprised. He goes, I can't believe you cheated on me. Why? Well, I'm not justifying what she did, but she tr did try to talk to you. She did try to have these conversations. And then you're sitting over here because you thought everything was fine in your world, even though she was crying for help. And then you're, you're kind of over here in your corner trying to be righteous about it, saying, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know how this happened. Everybody else did. Yeah. I mean, looks like, or I mean, sounds like, you know, there was definitely um, kind of a, a void in, in like honesty and communication. Um yeah, <laughs> bitch. Did, did, I, <laughs> how did, it, did I activate Siri? Yeah. Um, no, but definitely sounds like there was a void there. But at the same time, it's like on, on the girl's side, right? If she recognizes that that's the problem and, and also recognizes that it's not something that they're making progress on. And it's not something, especially if it's important to her, right? I mean, as a partner, if somebody's telling you that that's important to them and that they need that or they want that, it's something you should listen to and at least entertain at the very least, right? Yeah. But if you're just being dismissive and just ignoring it, that's a terrible position to put them in. Yeah. But so 
like for on the girl's side, I can understand why it might have made her feel just like deflated and and like unimportant. But the solution isn't to go out and find another dude. Then, like, if you can't, of course. I mean, yeah. I mean, that definitely wasn't a solution. Yeah. I think what I'm, the thing that I understand mm-hmm. is that, or I want people to understand is in their case, like he was shocked that mm-hmm. as if it happened out of nowhere. Oh, okay. I you see. Know? And a lot of yeah. our friends too, we kind of saw it, right? Mm-hmm. And they were one of those people too that they would always say they never fought. You know that everything was great and fine, but it wasn't really so much. She would say it; he would always say it all the time. Mm. Which, which I'll be honest, it fucking annoyed me. Like, cause nobody, cause I'm over here fighting with my girlfriend every fucking day. <laughs> this is my girlfriend at the time, you know. Yeah. And he's over here like, dude, like, let me just tell you, man, these fights aren't worth it. You know, me and blah blah blah. We we ha- I don't even remember the last time we fought. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. She was sucking somebody else's dick. You fucking asshole. You know? And he, it was almost like he was trying to make me feel bad about the problems that I was having with the girl, yeah. with my girlfriend at the time. But yeah. it was like, you're so fucking dumb. You don't even know what's going on right in front of your eyes, man. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean. I, oh, I, I feel so bad for saying this, but oh, motherfucker, I was so happy. Oh, so fuck. I clown. I, hey, listen. Everything I'm saying on this podcast, uh, I've already clown, clowned uh-huh. on him about. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, how's y'all? You like that shit. You uh-huh. over here, Mr. Perfect. <laughs> you know, but he's like, yeah, man, I fucked up. I was like, yeah, dude. And yeah. You you were kind of like laying it hard on me sometimes talking about like, oh, man, you're saying that the shit that I was going through was some immature shit mm-hmm. when really it was just me trying to figure out we were we were just open about how we felt and we were arguing because we couldn't understand each other. Yeah. I was like, you wouldn't even argue. You would yeah. just shut her ass down and make her feel like she was dumb. Yeah. I Bitch, mean I, I love mean, you, man. <laughs> the 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 thing is though, is like, yeah, well, I, I see what you're saying of like why is this a surprise to you, you know, when when this was clearly going on. But at the same time, it's like, you know, if you guys aren't first of all able to uh do it in a healthy manner, figure out your problems in a healthy, productive manner, um, then you, you have to come to terms with the the possibility that you guys just aren't compatible with each other yeah. for long term anyway. I think in this case, though, it was more like, it's not that they weren't compatible. Mm-hmm. No matter what, the, the stuff that he was doing, mm-hmm. and mind you, I'm... I was his friend first. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I met him through a couple of homies back in the day, but mm-hmm. I was his friends first before I met her. So mm-hmm. if anything else, my loyalty lies with him. Yeah. But he, this is a problem that he would have no matter what, whether mm-hmm. it's with this girl or somebody else. Yeah. It's, you know, kind of like talking to a woman as if she's crazy because she feels something that he doesn't understand, yeah. right? It's, it's going to be problematic either way. Well, how she dealt with it was fucking terrible. Mm-hmm. But it was kind of interesting because this was the first time um, I, it kind of cast a doubt in my head of, oh, could, would I leave somebody if, if they cheated on me? Mm-hmm. If we've been through so much and there's a bit of fault on my side too, mm-hmm. like would I leave them or mm-hmm. could we become stronger from this? Mm-hmm. And it, it actually made me change my mind a little bit about, because I was so, I had such a hard stance on it. It was, I would leave this person 100%. Mm-hmm. Now I'm wondering, now I'm like 70%, eight, 98, 90, 90% I'd leave. Now that 10% doubt is there. I'm uh-huh. like, oh, maybe I, I'd be strong enough to fight it out. But mm-hmm. if, if the thought of me laying down and I'm like, somebody's dick was in that mouth, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like son of a bitch. <laughs> and I know people are like, well, they had sex before you. That's different. Yeah. When you get with somebody else, you're a born again virgin. <laughs> All right? You were baptized in somebody else's new cum. It's different. Yeah. Th- like I said, it would just be really hard to kind of get past the whole violation of trust that you have yeah it's like like, you know every time they go out to get some milk i'm like bitch what kind of milk you going out for exactly like (laughs) what type of colgate you using yeah what kind of colgate you using it's like like, i don't know your mouth smells like dick for some reason i don't know why it smells a little weird yeah it it does taste like like, why you why you sleeping so fucking peacefully right now you you Uh, fuck right now uh, i um, that's the part that would bother me my every day after it's mm-hmm. like oh fuck like yeah because the once that seed is planted in your mind you know it might be, it might not be an easy thing to like uh rid your thoughts of so you have know you, have you ever been cheated on before no no i haven't uh so i don't have any personal experience so i can only speak hypothetically about it but i i talk about it more so from a standpoint of like what i find important you know i, I mean <sighs> I don't know if it was cheating per se, but mm-hmm. you but you met that girl, the the one the oh, I can't say her name, but mm-hmm. the one that I was that was in a serious relationship prior to Mariel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that girl, she she dated, she was trying to get with somebody else while we were together. Oh, and I thought that I could move past it, right? Uh-huh. 
And it wasn't even that. She was doing it to fucking in, in a very vengeful way. That's, yeah, you see, know? That's, so, that's, that's fucking terrible. So just to kind of give tell people this story, this was like the first time that, man, eh, it's probably second time. My bitches be cheating on me. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. But uh, <laughs> it just opened up a wound right yeah. now. Why y'all be cheating on me and shit? The fuck I do? But um, she... There was a friend that I had, right? Um, she and I were very close. But prior to me getting with her, mm. she knows that I have a lot of close female friends, mm -hmm. right? But the reason why they're friends is because we understand why we're friends. Yeah. There's no fucking attraction. But this girl that I was friends with, uh, we had a brief moment where we were very, very flirtatious. I'll be, I say we were kind of dating. Mm -hmm. um, I was very upfront about it. Mm -hmm. And I told her because I wanted to be very straightforward. Yeah. And I'm not trying to tell you that I'm a great guy, yeah. but... I, I want people to know the type of relationships that I have with people because I'm trying to think of like how I would feel in that situation. Mm -hmm. So I told her that, hey, this girl and I, we never we never hooked up or anything like that, but we used to be very flirtatious. Like I used to chase after this girl, mm -hmm. but I don't find her attractive at all. A thousand percent. Like mm -hmm. I'm talking about, I'd fucking chop off my left foot before <laughs> I have to put my mouth on her. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But you know, we're friends. I was like, if you don't want me to be around her because it makes you feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. Let me know. And she would understand too because of our past and it makes it a little awkward. Yeah. And she goes, she goes, no, 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 no. She met her too. She knows of her. Um, they've, they've actually mingled throughout each other's circles. So mm -hmm. she goes, yeah, no, that's perfectly fine. I love her. She's super cool. I could trust her. I trust you. Fine. She said that without believing it. Yeah. I believed her. Yeah. Because she said it so convincingly. Um, I hadn't, while the, the time that she and I were together, I hung out with her once for a shoot. Uh-huh. Um, oh shit, that probably gave a little too much. But she was on she was on a couple of my videos yeah. right back in the day. A uh -huh. thousand of my videos, you'll never know. <laughs> One. <laughs> um and she I hung out with her once before and, and with her, right? Mm -hmm. I hung out with her the second time while she, with my girlfriend, her mm -hmm. and my brother there. Mm -hmm. So it was four people. Yeah. Right. And she and I have a very joking, funny relationship. Mind you, I don't find her attractive. I'm very fucking clear about that shit. Yeah. Uh, later on, I found out that um, she kind of calls me up and, you know, people will feel guilty, especially if you don't do anything wrong to them. Yeah. Like if there's nothing that you've done yeah. to elicit that type of response. Right. You know, she's a good, I think she still is a really good girl, but I think that guilt was eating her up. So that night that we were hanging out, I, I kind of got these weird signs and I never pieced it together. But she was a lot more touchy feely mm -hmm. in front of everybody, mm -hmm. right? Like she was like putting her hand in my back pocket, mm -hmm. almost very possessive, right? Yeah. It's kind of like what a guy does to a girl when he puts his hand on a girl's lower back uh -huh. that they're together to let other guys know, like, <laughs> hey, we we together, <laughs> just to let you know. Yeah. And she was doing the female version of that, right? Mm -hmm. But I remember we were at a grocery store and she was like doing it a really aggressive. It was I don't mind her grabbing my ass, but it was more like. It didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. Like, it didn't feel natural. Right? Yeah, and yeah. I was like, hey, you're a lot more touchy feel. She goes, why? Like, she goes, like, we're you together. like that? Yeah. She's like, we're together. Yeah, doing like, shit like that, yeah. which is not like her, uh -huh. you know? And I was like, what the hell? I was kind of weirded out by it, but I didn't mind. But um, later that night, I was like, hey, we're going to go get dessert. Let's all decide to go to a dessert place after we had dinner. Mm -hmm. And then she was kind of acting a little weird. And she goes, well, um, I'm just going to go home. Right. Like uh, my mom kind of wants to see me. We haven't hung out because yeah. she came all the way from uh, NorCal at the yeah. time. And she was visiting me because she yeah. was in uh, pharmacy school at the time. Uh -huh. And uh, I was like, okay, so like whatever, whatnot, give her a kiss goodbye. And she leaves. And it's me, my brother, and the other girl. Uh -huh. We're hanging out. Three people. She and I are not alone together. Yeah. I, I, she and I were never alone together. Yeah. I made sure of that shit uh -huh. because even if she told me it was okay, I watch out for my bad first. <laughs> right. Because right? I don't want anybody to give me a reason for anything. I need, right. Yeah. I need, I need a fucking alibi here. <laughs> exactly. So I want people to know ain't yeah. nothing going on for sure. Yeah. And I, I thought that was respectful. I never hung out with that girl alone, and that was twice. And we were together for about eight months. I saw her twice, mm -hmm. once for uh, work reasons, and mm -hmm. the second time was with her because she said they were friends. Mm -hmm. And so she actually left that night later on to go hang out with another guy. Mm. And I don't know what the fuck they did. And mm -hmm. she said, like, they didn't, you know, hook up or anything, but they did some shit or whatever, mm -hmm. right? And I remember this moment too because I was in the apartment and Jason Chen and Joseph Vincent were shooting a fucking video mm -hmm. in my apartment. Yeah. And she told she was telling me this over the phone. And bro, I was screaming at the <laughs> top of my fucking lungs. And they're trying to do a funny music video. Yeah. But I'm I'm ruining the mood. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? 
fuck? Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. And then they could hear me like break shit in my room because uh -huh. I was so fucking mad. And the reason why I was so mad wasn't even the cheating part, right? Because uh -huh. I didn't do anything. Yeah. It was all in her own head. Right, right. It's just her insecurity. It was her insecurity. That yeah. I was like, what? And I asked her, I was like, what could I have done to make this better? Mm -hmm. What could I have done? Right. And the, the thing that I want to reflect back on and the, the, the responsibility that I had to take was that in all honesty, it was probably because I don't think I really, he loved her, Yeah, you know, and she probably felt that a little bit that yeah. she probably loved me more than I loved her. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that girl, but she felt something was missing and that's mm -hmm. the responsibility that I had to take. Yeah. But obviously what she did was fucking outlandish. Yeah. And I was so fucking mad and I, and it was, it was, she did that. She was, she met up with this dude that mm -hmm. was like in her, a part of her church and they mm -hmm. both lived in Southern California. So during the time they were on break and they yeah. met up and I was like a church boy, mm -hmm. bitch, are you, uh, is this a Korean drama? You had to do the classic church cheating. Uh -huh. That's like the fucking pastor that hooks up with the piano lady. Yeah, like, yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and they were in the praise team together. Uh -huh. And I remember I was so fucking mad. And this is during the time, this is like recently, this is, I haven't been in LA that long. Yeah. So during this time, I was still connected to some very bad people, you know, <laughs> and specifically out in, in the fucking Stockton Modesto area. We uh -huh. know that's fucking hood as fuck. Yeah. I actually found out where he lived. Uh -huh. right? I was that fucking mad. Yeah. I remember I hung up that phone that day. I was like, you know, he's fucking dead, right? Yeah. I hung up that phone. I hit up a couple of homies. Yeah. I found out where he lived uh -huh. because the school that she attended, the university that she attended is very fucking small. Uh -huh. Found out where he lived, yeah. where his parents were and everything and uh -huh. I literally was on the phone I was like is this his name first yeah. and last name this is his address and she yeah. got dead quiet uh -huh. I was like he's gonna get fucked up today yeah right and then she was like oh, no, he's a good guy and then I and then I had this moment too where I remember I was like what the fuck are you doing yeah and I remember I felt like a loser because I let her and that guy control my emotions mm -hmm. and then I was like you know what he's good I was like all I know is that and by the way I'm, I'm not telling you I'm super mature because mm -hmm. Uh, a week later, I flew into town and we were reconciling this and then we thought we were going to get over it. Mm -hmm. I thought I was. Mm -hmm. But I literally told her, I was like, when I come into town, you guys are in church together. I was like, that whole week that I'm in town, he needs to not be in the city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he needs to not be in the city. <laughs> and then she goes, okay. And then she let him. He actually left. Uh -huh. So... Because I, I was still mad. Yeah. And I was still fucking immature. Like, yeah. I, I wanted to fucking break that fool's fucking legs. Yeah. Specifically because he did it in the name of the Lord. He was a part of a praise team, you fucking Jezebel, you piece of shit. But uh, I thought that I could get over that, right? But that shit always stuck with me. Yeah, and that's, I, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. And, and the thing is, it's like, you know, it, it's not um, necessarily like a bad quality in you as a human being if you can't get past that or you find yeah. that important enough in a relationship where it's a deal breaker you know every everybody will have um different stances and different extremities of how they consider certain uh parts of a relationship how how important they deem a certain part of a relationship and it's like to me you know trust and honesty is is really important and if somebody violate like there shouldn't ever be a moment where you should question like whether or not you could trust your partner, whether yeah. or not you can be uh, open uh, about your about your honesty, about your honest feelings to your partner. Um, and I feel like when something like that happens, it's a violation uh, at the very least of, of trust and um, a violation of honesty as well, because it was, it obviously came to light at some point. You yeah. know what I mean? And you, like I, I'll still defend her. She's a very sweet girl. Like mm -hmm. she, she's an awesome girl. Like I think she's really amazing. I don't think that she has like an evil bone in her body, but the way that she kind of expressed her discontent in our relationship oh, was man. a terrible way to do Insecurity's it. Insecurity's a bitch, bro. Yeah, It'll... especially over that fucking girl. Yeah, that girl sucks. <laughs> like you couldn't be jealous of somebody else. Yeah. Like what the hell? It, you she know, could, she actually she's my friend. She's great. <laughs> but in terms of like out of all the people in the world, you yeah. know, I'm like. You know, I was around some bad bitches. Like, why the fuck not? Yeah, right. You know, out of all the people, I'm like, God, what the fuck? Dude, but that's the thing, man. It's like insecurity will drive people to do crazy shit, bro. I've been on the receiving end of that where I had, you know, a jealous girlfriend. And like dealing with that was not easy because I'm not like that, you know? Because my thing is, it's like, dude, if I trust you, I trust you, you know? Also, like, in my mind too, though, for me, it was like, what? fucking 
I am surprised she liked me. You uh -huh. know what I, mean? I was like, what other women you think is gonna take me away, dude? What the fuck were you thinking about? Like, I, what, you, what you think? I'm, I'm rod dogging her. My brother's watching. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, like, what are you thinking is happening right now? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? It's uh, like you you were there. Yeah, John John is holding the camera and filming. <laughs> yeah, what is going on in your fucking mind? You know, that's what I'm saying. It could those thoughts can go to crazy places when they're insecure. Yeah. You know. I mean, look, man, I've been accused of shit because of a girl's insecurity of where it's like absolutely fucking ridiculous to mm -hmm. me. But in their mind, it's a realistic scenario. It's a realistic possibility. I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know? But that's what I'm saying is like, like, what fucking bitch are you talking to? It's like my mom. Who the fuck is mom? I know. I was like, so Who you're you saying, calling mom? Huh? <laughs> I know. So like you're saying it's another bitch. Yeah. It's like it's my mom, yeah, bitch. My mother. Yeah. You know who gave birth to yeah. me? <laughs> it's like still another girl in yeah. there. Like fuck, man, yeah. chill. Um, and you know it can go both ways. I've seen uh plenty of times where uh you know my girlfriends like not not like romantic but like friends that are girls have had. Jealous boyfriends. Dude, male jealousy, though, scary. Yeah. Just because they get physical. Man. Yeah, they man. Get, they're yeah. dumb. Yeah. I mean, they, they they can get violent. They can, you know, get threatening. Like, it's it's not a it's not a nice thing to witness. Um, and at one point, it got, one of the situations, it got so bad um, that this guy was threatening to, um, like, come to her family's home and then, like, uh, kill himself in front of the lawn, or like I, what I, a I, fucking. I, loser. I think I think he said he was gonna shoot up, shoot up the family, or and, and then like hearing oh. that, I got so fucking pissed, and I'm like, tell me where the fuck this dude is right now, yeah. you know? Like tell me, like let me fucking have a conversation with this dude because like what he's saying is is completely out of line. But I wasn't thinking a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking a bat to the dome, you know? <laughs> like, um, but yeah, he was like. He was on this tip where he just kept upping his uh his threats, right? Yeah. Of what he's gonna do. Like if because I think I think uh they had broken up or something, and then like he didn't she he didn't want her seeing other people or like you know, the idea oh of that was like God, killing you are him. Such a fucking loser. Yeah, dude. That, and that's what made me th that's what that's a thought that I had is like, dude, how fucking small are you? You know, it's, it's weird when people become very possessive of somebody else, right? Like as yeah. if they're property. Right. And it's it's right. a weird, it's like, how little do you think of yourself mm -hmm. that you have? The only way that you can keep somebody is if you ball and chain them, <laughs> you know, like you have nothing else to offer. So the only way that you could keep somebody around you is to threaten them. Mm -hmm. Like you are a loser, dude. Yeah, for sure. He's for like, sure. I'm going to, man, motherfucker. She's like, I'm going to kill myself. I'm like, motherfucker, do it. <laughs> <laughs> good luck <laughs> i know after you threaten somebody's family and threaten to kill them yeah. motherfucker, you shoot yourself first then dude yeah, jackass exactly like, so you know, oh, that's crazy to me yeah so like you know i've definitely heard like uh on the other end and it's like you know that's that's a problem that both male and female uh people can have it's and it's like it can get really ugly man but for me i've I've never been the jealous type. Like I said, for me, because trust is so important, because honesty is so important. Oh, lucky if, you, man. I, yeah. was, I was a jealous type, dude. <laughs> My first girlfriend, I was a jealous type. Oh, really? Oh, I was super jealous, man. Oh, I man. Fucking one time we were walking by and then a tree brushed up on her arm. I fucked up that tree so bad, <laughs> dog. I plucked the leaves out that motherfucker. You motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, you fucking yeah. eucalyptus bitch. Yeah. I fucking. How dare so, you yeah. fucking put hands on my lady? I fucking sliced those leaves off, yeah. bitch ass tree. I was super jealous. But once again, that was because I didn't didn't find value myself though mm. like i was like how could i have gotten this girl which by right. the way looking right. back on it she was pretty average mm. but in my mind you know i'm like this is the girl of my dreams and anybody else who would come in between that they're trying to take something is almost like i felt like i tricked her this <laughs> this far and i can't have somebody else realize that the, that the jig is up so <laughs> imposter <laughs> syndrome right so i felt that somebody else if they walked into the scene they could offer something more because i wasn't offering her anything yeah and somehow i just tricked her into falling in love with me <laughs> that's how that's how low my my vision of myself was was this the girl that also subsequently broke your heart yep <laughs> <laughs> She's the one that uh, she was the Brian McKnight girl. Yeah, the voice to men and the Brian McKnight. <laughs> yep, she was the, she was that one. She was the one. No, but yeah, that's that's the thing, man. Is that a lot of these things come from obviously self issues. You know, it's it's yeah. things that you gotta sort out within yourself. 
Um, and that's something that I feel like is really important going into a relationship to, or to, to have a healthy relationship is you got to make sure you're right first too, you mm-hmm. know, because if you're not right, how do you expect to care for somebody else, take care of somebody else? Oh, it's fucking impossible, yeah, man. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so there's going to be constantly like issues that come up within that. Um, but you know, sometimes, uh, like the whole mental health topic can be a sensitive topic to some people. I don't got any problems. I don't oh, yeah. need to. I don't need to see a, a specialist or a therapist. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm good, you know. But no, it's it's like you just have to look at kind of your history and and like uh, how you are in certain situ- situations and circumstances, and be honest with yourself about that. Um, so when I say honesty too, it's like not just to your partner, but with yourself too. Oh, and that's you know? the hardest part, man. Yeah, be honest is. with yourself. It is. It like is. I said, man, I fucking didn't know I was fat. That <laughs> shit was the roughest conversation I've ever had with myself. Man. That it's, shit was tough. It's like, Dave, are you fat? Nah, I'm not <laughs> fat. You ain't fat, yeah, bro. You just fat. fluffy, <laughs> cute, bro. Just walk around, got a little jiggle. Yeah, exactly. Like, I just, nothing like, out of the norm. Since it's quarantine, I gained like 10 pounds. And like, good thing I'm I'm, I'm a little more self-aware now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I was like, ah, oh, shit, man. Like. These, these shorts are cutting into my circulation <laughs> and my legs started going numb. And I'm like, oh man. I well, the difference getting... is you're aware of it this time though. I uh, know. And before I would just blame the clothes. Yeah. I'm like, damn man, these fucking European cuts, they sh- extra tight, dude. Hey, they've, they've been fucking up on these sizes. Why I, are they making these sizes so small, no, man? I remember, I'm not even lying, but I was wearing like um, an XL shirt. Uh-huh. I'm like, man, dude, these, I, I literally said like, dude, everybody's just doing this slim cut European <laughs> shit. And it was a regular XL shirt. Yeah. I just couldn't fit into it. And I, I convinced myself is because fashion has changed yeah and i couldn't fit it yeah and i just found an xl that did fit me and it was a gilded shirt oh man <laughs> you know the, the sometimes the mental gymnastics you have to do to justify something you know what i mean how me live <laughs> shit <laughs> but yeah man um being honest with yourself is is so crucial it's it's such it's like such a, a um important factor to have like successful relationships with other people oh yeah know? man yeah. Um, oh. Girls, I mean, it doesn't apply to just girls and guys, like in terms of your significant other, but just in, in any human relationship, you know? Yeah, man. I suggest people too. It's like, I, I know you're, you're never going to find a complete human being when you meet them. Sometimes like you become a complete human being because of the journey that you take with mm-hmm. the person that you're mm-hmm. with. But uh, I, I say like anybody who wants a long-term relationship, like you want to grow with somebody, make sure that person always has value in themselves first. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, people will go in and out of it. We'll, we'll, we'll fuck up. There'll be times where we'll go through our own depression and we'll, we'll, we'll question who we are. But if that person doesn't value themselves as an individual, they're not going to value your, your time or who you are either. It's hard to, it's hard. It's not, it's not because they have, they don't have an, they don't have the ability. Yeah, exactly. It's not because they want to make you feel like shit or treat you like that. It's just like you said, it, it like, there's something not right within themselves yeah. and, and that needs to be addressed first in order to, you know, like, like the good parts of that to manifest itself into the relationship. Yeah. It's, it's something as like simple as, how, you know, how can you expect somebody to love you when they don't even know what love is? Mm. Like mm-hmm. that, that has to start with right. you. Right. That's, that's as cliche as it gets, but that shit is fucking facts. Everybody that I know that genuinely loves other people, mm-hmm. they love themselves first. Mm-hmm. And even these people who are a little too gratuitous with their time and they sometimes like um, sink into too much of the, the the giving part. Yeah. They they still love themselves. They they still like when they're by themselves or when they have time to themselves, the, they don't get lost in being obsessive with defining their happiness through somebody else. Right. They're, they're, they're pretty solid. So um, I've made that mistake. Mm-hmm. Uh, I only made it once though. Mm-hmm. I never made it twice again. Mm-hmm. I will never ever do that ever again. Even if if Mariel happens to leave me, uh-huh. you know, number one, you guys, <laughs> you about to see me. Just, you won't see a podcast for another two, two, three months. I don't. I, if you if you guys can't tell, I don't take breakups very well. <laughs> Especially when I'm not the one he's breaking gonna up. He's gonna make his own mixtape and he's gonna oh, be you know, in his no. feelings. Bright midnight, we coming back, dude. I'm about to cry into my ear holes again. <laughs> oh, shit. That's not, one of the saddest fucking images. <laughs> <laughs> you know one of the mixtapes that I got though I forgot uh, to mention I made my own but my best friend made me my, uh, a mixtape too he was uh, like hey dog I made this shit for you and I remember I told him I got dumped and I did it in the parking lot of a Wendy's oh and man I, I don't remember what that burger tasted like because yeah. I was crying so much I couldn't taste anything but that's the first time he saw me cry and that shit was mad awkward oh fucking hell man that's, I, uh, I cried in the empty parking lot of a fucking Wendy's that's next funny. to this Costco in Sacramento while you're eating a burger while I'm eating a burger crying dude <laughs> that shit 
Oh, shit. That's, that's as low as it gets right there. That's man. pretty fucking low, dude. <laughs> Crying into a double, ba- into a baconator. That's oh, what it was. Oh, my God. You hated yourself that much to get a baconator. Y'all, y'all know that fucking, that, that video of that little kid crying? That little cute little black kid crying and he's eating a burger as he's crying? Yeah. That was me, dude. When I saw that shit, everybody was laughing. I wasn't laughing. I'm like, that shit's real, son. <laughs> That's me. This is this is the the mood I'm in right now, man. I can't I can't help you, it. You gotta understand what it's like to cry into a hamburger. <laughs> That's a. I I'm sorry, man. I can't relate to that. It's Cause you heartless fool. <laughs> I've I've uh I don't know, man. I've uh, never been like, um, I guess on that level before. I hope somebody breaks your fucking heart, dude. <laughs> I really do. I wish somebody just breaks your fucking heart. <laughs> I hope somebody. I hope you fall in love and they just fucking leave you. <laughs> what was why so I could experience crying into a burger? That's right, dude. You need to be a human being. Talk, you need to feel that shit. Talking about uh, being, you got you. That's that's a problem. You got to fix it in yourself, man. No, I'm fine, dude. I, I want you to feel that pain. Oh I want you to be God. devastated. Oh my I want God. you to wake up one day and just start listening to fucking. I don't know, Sade, and just start <laughs> crying into your ear holes. Look, don't get me wrong, man. Like, any breakup is not easy, but at the same time, it's like, I don't think um, I've ever kind of fallen into, like, those cliche scenarios, you know, that you see oh, man, in TV you know. shows and movies, and, like, you listen to, like, these sad songs or these your, love Your girlfriend's going to listen to this right now. She's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Saying if I leave you right now, you wouldn't cry? You wouldn't cry for me? Look at this heartless bastard. <laughs> If I told Mario, I was, like, I was like, if you leave me, I was like, I'm not leaving you. You have to leave me. <laughs> I was like, I've invested so much time into this. <laughs> and I just, and I genuinely, if you leave uh-huh. me, uh-huh. I hope you know that you just left the man devastated in your way. <laughs> <laughs> you have to live with you that. You ruined the fucking man. I might not come out of this. Yeah. Just to, just to put it out there. So <laughs> I'm just going to let you know. I told her that too. Oh I was like, my God. I thought, I'm not going to leave her. Yeah. Like I, I can't, I yeah. can't do it. Yeah. Like I've invested a lot of time. I feel like, you know, things are going well. If out of nowhere, you're like, you know what? I, I feel like I don't love you anymore. Yeah. I hope you know. <laughs> I hope she knows. I can't, I can't even imagine you what your even. reaction is going to be. Oh, bro. I know what it's going to be. I'm going to collapse to my knees and grab her ankles. I'd be like, don't leave me, please. <laughs> Dog, I'm going to grab her knees and just oh cry into her kneecaps. Oh, my God, dude. That is one of the saddest things, yep. but also the funniest things. Yep. And I'm just going to grab her ankles and she's going to try to leave. And then she's just going to drag me across oh the floor. Oh, my God, man. By the way, I'm saying this because I've yeah. actually done this before. Oh, my God. That's so dramatic, With dude. the first girlfriend, dude, when she dumped me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, this girl has done a number on you, bro. I told you. I I oh, make jokes, shit. but I, the, I've learned the most from my very first relationship because uh-huh. I did everything that a person shouldn't do, wow. and I never did it again. Man. I look back on that shit, dude. Dog, I crumbled. I crumbled like a Jenga stack in front of her, dog. I just collapsed. And I was like, don't leave me. Bro, oh, 18-year-old David was a fucking emotional. Oh, shit, man. That's why when I give this advice, I'm telling people, I'm not saying that you're dumb. I'm saying yeah. I've, I've already done this. <laughs> You've already been I'm there. I'm like, don't do this. It's not worth it. You know how pitiful it is? Oh, man. Motherfucker, yeah, I have I, some dignity, man. I had no dignity whatsoever, <laughs> dude. I literally collapsed to the floor and I begged her to stay, man. Holy shit, and Crying into her kneecaps. Crying into her fucking kneecaps as she was crying on top of my head. <laughs> it's just a fucking layer of sadness. <laughs> on top of each other. Yeah. And that night I hit up my best friend and I cried into that Baconator. Oh my God. In the parking man. lot. That's such a sad, sad thing to fucking picture. <laughs> just being in your car. By yourself. Oh, it wasn't at in the an car. empty fucking parking lot. It was outside. Oh, it was outside. And, and I was chilling on the spoiler of that Honda oh, Accord. Okay, okay. Just crying it into it. Your... <laughs> I just remember looking at him, and he just couldn't say anything. He just put his hand on my shoulder, and he was just. Oh, oh so your friend was actually with you? Okay. Oh, he was there. Okay, okay. He's the one that drove me. Oh, okay. He drove me to the fucking Wendy's so we could talk Why about it. Why a Wendy's though? Huh? Cause he know what Papa likes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he Let me cheer you likes. up, bro. Let me cheer you up and take you to a Wendy's. <laughs> You know, Papa like that uh, bacon and that chicken McNug duck. Oh man, yeah. The, I, I'm sorry, man. I've I've never. Yeah, you heartless bitch. I, I, hope you do, I hope you deal with that shit one day, man. I hope. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't think it, it's in me to like um, 
yeah, to, to hit Do you that. think your dad's like that, though? Your dad doesn't have that shit in him? Nah, my pops ain't like that, dude. My pop, Dude, my pops is like that that old generation Korean dude. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, showing his emotions is, is like, almost he's almost incapable of doing mm. it. You know what I mean? And then as a result, I think a lot of that kind of got passed on to me. Because, like, you know, our family was never the, the like... Um, verbal affirmation of love and like you know hugging and things it, it was never that you know so i think it, it kind of shaped me you know uh, a certain way and um as a result it's it's hard for me to like uh be expressive with my emotions Damn. But, but but to offset that i can be very expressive of my my thoughts you know uh what i'm thinking and then I can I just, be. I just picture you just saying happy birthday to your girlfriend. And all you do is say, it is your birthday. <laughs> like Dwight. Like Dwight. It, it, it is it your is birthday. It is your birthday. Period. One brown balloon, one yeah. silver balloon. That's it. It is your birthday. Nah, I mean, look, man. I've It's something that I've recognized um, that I, I'm a little bit deficient in and, and I've tried to improve on it. But it's not going to be like a night and day difference, you know, uh, in, in a short amount of time. It's I'm trying to to kind of like... Uh, go against a lifetime of this shit to to work on it um and you know what in the past bro i've been accused by girls as being a robot you know of like not having any feelings and i'm like i'm a fucking human being i got feelings i'm surprised these girls didn't start cutting themselves in front of you just so you they, you feel something <laughs> no nah, it's not that i don't feel anything it's just that you know they they, they want it expressed in a certain way and it's and and it was like not the easiest she thing. Sent them over to me, dude. They would have got everything they needed. Eighteen year old David, they would have loved it. It's like this motherfucker just started pop locking on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> please, please, don't oh leave me. No, like, they, they would. They, that would me. be the opposite end of the spectrum. It's too overbearing, man. Nah, you don't know, dude. You don't. <laughs> what know. Is, what do you, mean, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. That. <laughs> You, know, you no, cried no. into a baconator, man. <laughs> you don't know. You got to go through those life experiences sometimes. <laughs> you need to you need to feel those pains. Hey, you know, what? I felt like you, though. When I when I broke up with my last girlfriend, uh, Khalif literally came in mm -hmm. afterwards after mm -hmm. I just broke up with her on the phone. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, I said, what's up, man? How you doing? I was like, what's up, bro? He's like, you hungry? I was like, you want to get something to eat? He goes, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm down. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just broke up with her. He was like, damn, you okay? I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> Damn, you know what? I'm just I'm about to admit something that I never admitted before. Okay. Okay. You're gonna fucking you're gonna you're gonna lose a lot of respect for me. <laughs> you're either gonna lose a lot of respect for me uh -huh. or uh -huh. you're gonna respect me a lot. Okay. So when I was going to break up with her, mm -hmm. at this point I had already cemented it cemented in my heart that mm -hmm. she wasn't the one for me. Mm -hmm. And I was okay with it. I yeah. was fine. Yeah. So when I told her like it was over. Uh, I could hear her kind of crying on the other end. Mm -hmm. I felt so bad for her because I didn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I started fake crying for her. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh so my God. I started, I started fake crying for her uh -huh. because I felt so bad uh -huh. that I didn't feel anything. Oh, so shit. So I, I literally put on my acting hat and I was like, I did not want to be this way, but I had to, but I. But I what the fuck are you going into I am Sam mode the fuck man I had a, I had a fucking holy I've shit never, I don't think I've ever sold this shit this oh, is a little embarrassing man. I must be getting older because I don't give a fuck but I yeah, it I, doesn't matter now I legit, <laughs> I legit started fake crying holy shit because I felt so bad for her uh, so I didn't, I wanted her, I didn't want her to feel like as if when I walked away that mm -hmm. I was a completely heartless human being mm -hmm. that I but, and and I kind of deflected on um I guess you would say that I kind of blamed it on the fact that she lightweight cheated on me. Uh -huh. But that really wasn't it. It was yeah. it was it was more like we just we didn't have it. It just piled on top of that, you yeah. know. Um and, and look, there's nothing wrong with that though. It's like honestly doing that is not a disservice to somebody. Well, I mean, not, not, I'm not talking about the fake crying thing. I'm talking about <laughs> ending the relationship. Don't, don't you judge me. No. <laughs> no, I'm not, hey, I didn't say anything. I want to get to the fake crying. <laughs> but I'm saying uh, ending the relationship, you're doing a service uh, because you're you're saving each other time. You're saving each other energy. It's like, look, it's not working. 
I'm I'm perfectly clear about that. And I'm Let's pretty fine. She found somebody else that will yeah. cry for her. Yeah, but the fake crime part, bro. <laughs> 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 that, that, that was unnecessary. Uh, that was highly unnecessary. Hey, man, I had to do it for her, dude. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it helped her, yeah. but I thought it would help her. Because okay. how, how like, terrible would it be that I just break up with her? I'm like, it is over. Right. Uh, nice to see you. Yeah, and then well, I ended good it. Good luck. <laughs> good luck. So I had to go. And then, you didn't work. You Look, know, okay, at thing. least, okay, at least it stemmed from like a pure place of like, you know, you had compassion. The comments below. I want to know if you think that, would you rather have a guy just be heartless about the breakup that you fucking loved, or would you at least have, want to have the guy show some emotion when they break up with you? <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Here's <laughs> it, it's, Is that if you are just kind of firm in your stance about it and, and like make it clear and there's not much emotion involved, it's like, well, fuck. As, as heartbroken as I am, this shit is over, you know? But then it's like, if you, you're heartless, bro. <laughs> nah, dog, you're heartless, man. I care. I care. Even I have to remember all the good times that we had. Yeah. And I, man, I'll tell you this, dude. <laughs> she couldn't tell that I was faking the cry, though. That's how your boy went on the Sundance, baby. Oh, oh, my God. Dog, I cried, man. I cried my fucking heart out, dude. And I just remember ending that phone call a mm -hmm. little embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was a little ashamed of myself. I was a little embarrassed. You should be ashamed of yourself. I <laughs> was all right. Just like Masvidal said, is super necessary. That's <laughs> super unnecessary. No, no, that's just, that was, dude, that super, shit was super necessary. No, it was super I, unnecessary. No, I disagree. I was super necessary. <laughs> I had to do the fake cry for her. Oh, but hey, you know what though? If it helped her, then great, right? It it it, it served its purpose, I guess. At least it was coming from a pure place. Yeah. Yeah. At least it wasn't like, you know, you're a sociopath just trying to emulate human feelings to, to relate. Yeah. You're just like, I, oh, she must be going through it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm going to give her something, dude. I'm going to give her something. Mm -hmm. She was a little upset, though, because I remember um, later on she texted me mm -hmm. how she felt about it. Mm -hmm. Not about the fake crying because mm -hmm. she, she, she didn't know. She didn't know. Yeah. Well, she doesn't listen to this podcast <laughs> and she's going to text me again. She's like, fuck you. You fucking animal. Yeah, you fucking animal. You didn't feel anything when you broke up with me. But I, um, but she said that she wished that I had broken up with her in person than over the phone. Mm. But, but it I, was kind of hard because the distance It was too. long distance. Yeah. I wasn't going to spend $200 to come break up with you. Right, the right, fuck? right. That's hella money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially at that time too. You yeah. Know, like, I don't think I could have fake cried in front of you in person. Yeah, like, I think exactly. I <laughs> I can only do it over the phone. That's just hard. Yeah. I would have to really bet the deck for that. No, I mean, look, man, I, I that, that's something I generally agree with is that, you know, if 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 you're capable of doing it in person for a breakup or, or even having a serious conversation about the relationship, you should do it face to face. Mm -hmm. But when you're dealing in long term, it's like it's not as practical, you know? Yeah. And it's like, let's save both of ourselves some time, some money, and traveling and just fucking do this the practical way. Yeah, you know? man. The fuck? But She's the rough. crying, highly, <laughs> the super on this no, series. <laughs> well, everybody, um, that wraps up this episode of the Jesus Break Podcast, where you guys think very low of me now, as if, as, as if your opinion wasn't low enough. Fuck, man. There it is. He's open. He opens up his chest for you to see. Yep. But uh, yeah, you guys can catch the Genius Brain Podcast every Thursday and Sundays. I told you a lot of this shit is deep shit, but sometimes it's dumb as fuck, man. I'm, I'm a stand-up comic first, baby. Here to help you guys out in your everyday problems. And you can find Edric at Ed2 on Instagram, everything else. And of course, check out S-E-R-T-S-O-C-I-E-T-Y.com, Secret Society. Yes, sir. For the, the clothing brand, man. You guys will love that shit. Cop it. It's fucking dope. It's probably part of my everyday wardrobe. You already know what's up. And uh, we'll see y'all next time. All right, y'all. Peace. Peace.